to school your institution on the student journey. Unify and edify the student experience. My name is Marilyn Cox. I'm the marketing principal within the Oracle Marketing Cloud's Industry Solutions Center of Excellence. I've included my contact information if you have any questions or would like any clarity on the best practices and use cases defined in today's presentation, please feel free to reach out. So a lot of times when we think about uh, marketing within higher education, we're very much focused on connecting with alumni to do fundraising or we think about student recruitment. But it's very important that institutions focus on the long-term relationship with the student as well as the family. And that involves a series of instructors, administers, administrators, policies, and uh, different procedures that that student is going to interact with through their time with the university. This is a fantastic graph um, that really defines the different stages of the early uh, student engagement. So that college decision journey, the application journey, and that orientation journey that those first year students, transfer students, as well as parents and guardians are going to experience. So it's very important that as you think about your journey, that your communications and your content align with each of these and help support and educate as the student uh, journeys through each stage. So let's take a look at a couple of use cases where institutions have leveraged marketing and leveraged marketing technology to better increase student engagement. Uh, Orbis Education, uh, in the beginning, all email communications were driven by advisors and call center representatives, representatives. And this was done manually or through a specific CRM trigger. And these existing communications were built for lead capture, contact attempts, and appointment confirmations. They also had five different education institutions which Orbis communicated on behalf of. And each of those had their own domain, branding, and messaging. So they implemented marketing automation and integrated this with their CRM system for a more unified view of students. They also created signature rules and templates that populated field merges uh, and created this dynamic content based on the prospective students' records. And they also conducted some A-B split testing as well. They've now automated previous activities that were time intensive for their call center, such as rescheduling appointment requests, confirming information, and gathering pre-qualifying information. After an appointment, advisors no longer need to remember to send an email or to send invitations to upcoming site events. Standard communications have been built as campaigns are sent automatically on behalf of the advisors. And they can project where pipeline is for future application periods, which is extremely beneficial for their presentations to the board of directors. Marketing and admissions are working closely together on messaging and overall strategy, and that's really helped keep a strong roadmap for future activities, along with continuous optimization of existing campaigns. The back and forth communications remain collaborative and really allow everyone an opportunity to have their voice heard and their messaging ideas come to life. You'll notice that they continually look for areas to test their content and messaging because they're planning future campaigns and they're monitoring current activity to see where there may be correlation in any sort of conversion changes. By having an automation platform that is easily adaptable, they were able to make quick changes as necessary when a prerequisite requirement might change or an event might need to be canceled. When planning campaigns, they also ensure that everyone is clear on the targeted segment, and they work to ensure the specific messaging that goes out has significance, as well as a call to action for the prospective student. The platform is a support structure for admissions, and the entire department recognizes the assistance in time efficiency and effectiveness in their day-to-day -day efforts and what has now allowed them to truly nurture their prospective students on a global level while also maintaining a customer-centric approach. Herzing University, I also saw a lot of success when 
focusing on student recruitment and student onboarding. Their goal was to turn more prospects of the attempted status to a contacted status because they knew that this would reduce the cost per student application and improve overall post-conversion rates. So their solution was to take the already crafted email that was being sent to prospects manually from advisors through Outlook. And they were able to then really leverage the basics of automating marketing processes. So they took these old manually sent emails, and at the time there were six of them, and they set up an automated welcome program to send out to new as well as old prospects uh, in just a matter of days. And then once the prospect status status changed to contacted, the program would end. They ended up placing 59,000 dormant uh, leads into their welcome program, and after six months, those leads converted to 119 real students. The welcome program reduced the amount of admission staff time and effort necessary to send out thousands of emails to prospective students, as well as removed the element of human error and typos from co and from their copy. And it also gained the university opportunity costs by allowing both admissions and call center staff to focus on the newest leads, where their personal touch is most effective in converting the lead to a new student. Based on the data collected from the first welcome program, they developed and implemented a new welcome program. And they worked with their partners to improve their email copy and increase touch points coming through the welcome program emails. And they're really beginning to see this ongoing improvement in conversion rates um, year over year. Uh, after six months, the leads that they generated converted to 82 real students and for them, that actually translated to roughly $4 million added to the university's bottom line. You also need to understand which digital channels are relevant to your audience, and it's important that you consider both social media and digital ads. And there's a great video, if you'd like to reach out to me, I'm happy to share it with you, uh, on behalf of National Heritage Academies, where they talk about how they leverage social as well as digital advertising to drive, drive student enrollment. Now, of course, it's important to remember that student recruitment is only one phase of the student journey. What you see here is a, how many organizations define uh, the first year of a student. And of course, it's important to remember that the journey will vary depending on ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, academic performance, financial demographics, um, as well as international student status. So it's just important to remember that these variations have to uh, drive the content, cadence, and messaging that you're delivering. So Chamberlain College of Nursing um, really strive to enhance their level of customer service. And through their applicant and pre-enrollment lifecycle program, they were able to do that by focusing on keeping their application applicants engaged and informed during the process while providing them with direct lines of communication to the admissions team. And in six weeks, they actually implemented a solution consisting of two email programs, um, a customized curl page that was driven by dynamic content and eight concurrent milestone evaluation programs that facilitate weekly relevant email updates throughout a 60-day life cycle. And individuals receive an email from the campus president as well as form submissions to advisors um, and the ability to initiate live chat with admission representatives from that Pearl page. They were able to develop these different uh, evaluation programs that were running concurrently and then compare the completed milestone date to the application date. And that really allowed them to provide the most relevant content to the recipient at the time that is really most relevant to them. St. Joe's University, um, what you'll find is they encourage prospective and current students to follow their Twitter pages. Um, and you notice that across a lot of colleges and universities, of course. But what makes St. Joe's special is that they asked recently accepted students to tweet a picture of themselves with their acceptance letters and then retweeted all of the pictures to associate an extremely positive effect with getting accepted. Uh, the University of Maryland Baltimore campus um, 
found success using social media. So a lot of universities are using social media as a platform to facilitate community development and engagement. And that's a really great medium for people to ask questions about moving in, getting class schedules, um, and some people are even meeting their roommates through these groups. And you're definitely going to see that if you observe some of the interactions on the UMBC uh, social media channels. Uh, in fact, when I spoke with one freshman student, she said, our UMBC freshman class had a Facebook group. So during the summer, we communicated with each other. We talked about books, what classes people were taking, professors. We even had older students give us advice about UMBC. So now let's take a look at year two. So after you've conducted your student recruitment and after they've gone through the admission process and onboarding and then survived year one, these are some of the tasks that or the stages that a student going through year two is going to experience. And again, looking back at what we talked about with the year one journey, there are many different uh, demographical uh, attributes that are going to really affect the type of content and messaging and cadence that is going to be delivered. So Indiana University engaged its students uh, in content creation. Everyday students upload um, proposed blogs to the university content management system and the content director simply logs into the system, reviews and edits blogs for branding and grammar, and then publishes the blogs. The University of Indiana generates hundreds of posts in the voice of the customer every year and with very little work. When I spoke with a student at St. Joe's, she explained that content is driven by both students and faculty at their university. And she says that about 60% of the faculty, um, or 60% of the content is driven by the faculty and 40% is generated by students. But it's really that student generated content that's by far more effective. But as all, with all digital channels, there's only, they're only as good as the content that's delivered. Uh, it's especially true when looking at social media. When I spoke with a student at McGill University, he said that um, McGill mostly posts about research being conducted at the university. Sometimes they'll post classroom changes, but they don't really engage the students with social media. Uh, he mentioned that they had, um, if they talked about people that were coming to speak at the university, he'd be more interested in engaging. And the example he gave was that the Queen's Canadian emissary came and spoke, but no one knew she was coming until after she had spoken, and everybody had wished they had known that she was going to be on campus. So let's take a look at year three. Again, walking through some of those developmental tasks, common struggles, and then the resources on campus. This is giving you some ideas of the type of content that needs to be developed, um, the type of subject matter that you need to make sure that you're addressing. And then, of course, some of the different channels that outreach is going to occur on. UCLA discovered its recreation center drew over 43,000 unique visitors every year, um, or almost 5,000 more than its student enrollment. Purdue University discovered students who worked out more often had higher GPA. So consider extending your message and your communications to additional models of engagement. Could you look at events on campus? Could you look at the career center? Could you look at a speaker series? Make sure that you're really looking at more mature student engagement opportunities to really capture interest and engagement outside of the classroom. Colleges now encourage uh, prospective and current students to follow their Twitter pages, as we've talked about. Now, I want to go back to St. Joe's University because their Twitter handle has um, very easily accessible insider resources when looking at schools. So they have several different handles. They have at SJU Probs, at SJU BE Tech. These Twitter accounts give you the inside scoop on what you can really expect when you go to a particular school. So students know exactly how bad cafeteria food might be even before they find it or try it. And then finding resources like these are very important and a very essential digital tool when making ultimate college decisions. Every semester for one day, uh, the SJU Twitter account is actually taken over by current students who answer any questions about prospective undergrads. 
um, that they might have regarding the school. And at some schools, if you tweet the dining hall about wanting a certain dish or a certain ice cream, they'll have it the next day. Social media tools can capture social engagement and enter a student, parent, alumni, or donor into an appropriate communication channel, delivering relevant content and information. Okay, now let's take a look at year four. Again, some of the messaging, some of the subject matter, and some of the different channels that you need to make sure that you are addressing with your communications, as well as including, of course, to your communication strategy. I think this is some great feedback. I have a series of quotes that I'm going to walk through, uh, and these are coming specifically from students and how they perceive the content and communications delivered to them. So in this instance, one student said, our email blasts from the university are either sent to the entire student body, sent to an entire college, or divided by major. Academically, I'll probably get eight to 10 emails a day from the school. As a graduating senior, the overwhelming majority of these emails are about companies coming to the university for on-campus interviews. Also, because our emails are typically only sorted by a student's enrollment, your attendance or academic performance do not impact the number of emails you receive unless the professor wants to specifically reach out and email a student. Here's another one. My uni sends out these rather obnoxious emails daily about the chancellor's activities, which sometimes have relevant information concerning events and career planning, but you generally have to sign up for more relevant emails. So the need to opt in um, and the uh, path, of course, of which a student has to take is not as user-friendly as students would like to see. The student says, I think one way colleges are falling short with online correspondence is that the communication is very much one-sided. We rarely have opportunities to give feedback. In fact, most emails sent to us by the university are set up so that we can't reply to them. So while universities want to develop a two-way communication, the communication setup that exists for many of them right now is only meant to drive one-way communication. Socially, almost all communications from the school are done through social media. Our career development office, our student success office, and our student leadership and activity office all run their own Facebook and Twitter accounts and will post relevant updates throughout their posts. These are effective because students often share their posted content so many students see each other see each post. So this is a, a, a setup on social media where you can really segment your audience and you can provide relevant content to each audience instead of sending out more of that batch and blast type of communication. It's important to take a multi-channel multi marketing approach to your communication strategy. You need to incorporate all channels, whether it's web, social, video, email, personal communications, into the student journey. You need to make sure that you segment and target your communications, crowdsource relevant content, capture digital engagement, and then really automate the process. Finally, bring all of those takeaways together to match communications with interests and preferences. This will ultimately drive student enrollment, enhance the student experience, increase loyalty, and drive contributions. And ultimately, you're going to create that, that loyal uh, alumni. As you can see here, this is me and my kids at Buckeye Games. And you pass that love for the university and the love for that student experience on to future students.